All right, Journalism Corner, the debut. Um, I want to I wanna just kind of bring everyone into this by by discussing of the, the most common, I think, I guess, issue I see with, with aspiring journalists and their ability to keep at it and not give up. Um, and that is just the theme of persistence and getting out of your comfort zone. Um, I think being a journalist, A, is very, very uncomfortable in two ways. One, it's uncomfortable because it's a lot of work and it almost feels like you have homework. So first of all, if you don't enjoy it, then it's not the sphere for you. Uh, well, I think everyone, like in the abstract and everyone, when they, they think of the idea of, oh, I get to talk about football for a living, I mean, that's my dream. I do that anyway. So if I can get paid for it, then, then I want to do that. But then they get a job and it's like, oh, I have to write a match report or I have to do things that I don't really want to do. I have to like write associated press style articles and no one really knows my name. And if, if, I, if I put my name on it, it's on something like really generic and it kind of feels tedious and it feels like homework. Um, there's the, the other side of things is that to become a journalist, it's often an endeavor, especially if you're not, if you're not uh, taking a journalism course, let's say, and you want to dive into this full-time but you have a full-time job somewhere else so you have to come home from your job and you have to put mental energy towards this thing that you know you look at your options when you come home from work and it's like oh I could eat you know and then I want to go to the gym and before you know it, it's like 9 10 p.m. I have mental energy left for very little and I just don't have the mental energy so then it just ends up being sleep Netflix video games I don't know whatever so it's difficult. So it requires persistence. So on days, so there are some days you're going to have the motivation to do it. And there's other days that you just won't have the motivation to do it. You need to be able to find some consistency and persistence in your life and in your endeavor to do this. And you have to make it fun for yourself. The way I've made it fun is that, you know, I, I'm lucky in the sense, but it came with a lot of hard work to get to here. I don't really have a boss telling me what to do. It's, you know, we this podcast is, you know, a, a way it's structured in a way that all the writers have fun doing it and all the podcast hosts have fun doing it because we're not told to keep it formal we're not you know we're, we can talk about whatever we want we're okay going on tangents we don't rush it you know we're not a quick hitting podcast where it's like 10 points in 10 minutes quick 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 it, you know I, I never believe in that because I, I don't think you actually give value or information to the listeners in that situation because then you could just go on Google and look up things or, or look at the news if you wanted that kind of analysis. But we, we really try to dive deep and have a conversation we would in a bar, but with a little bit more uh, profoundness, if you will. So we have fun doing that. I think you have to have fun doing it. And if you don't, you're in trouble. And I, I would say that, like, you know, with in terms of persistence and consistency, I've seen a lot of podcasts come and go. I've seen, and this is, and, and part of the reason I want to focus on the first segment on this particular subject is because I would say half of my inbox is about podcasting and how do I become a podcast host and stuff. How do I, how do I figure it out? And half of it is just consistency and doing it even when you don't want to, when you don't want to, because believe it or not, there are days and plenty of days, especially if you, if you hit me on a day where I've had a long, long day, um, and you may or may not be able to hear this in my voice. I'm sure when you listen to me on this podcast, I won't speak for anybody else. I'm sure when you hear me on this podcast, there are, you can probably sense the difference in my energy levels and how much fun you have listening to it with how much fun I'm having doing it. Because there are days, and I would say maybe that this accounts for 20% of the episodes I do where I just don't feel like it. Um, my social vibe is, is a little bit off maybe because I'm just tired and I haven't really seen people all day. Uh, and the more people I see and the more people I talk to in, in a, any given day makes my podcast better because I've already kind of warmed up socially to be able to get on the microphone to actually have the confidence to speak. But trust me, there are days when I just don't feel like doing the podcast and, I, and I'd want to do something else. Um, and I'm sure you feel that. So one is you have to do it anyway. That's That's the rule. Do it anyway because you have to get out of your comfort zone and the moment you get comfortable it just means you stagnate or you're not growing as a journalist um i've had a rule in my journalism career where if it's uncomfortable i have to do it so here's an example i've been asked to go on persian tv a few times now um 
And I think if, if you're a Persian speaking listening to this and you've seen me on Iran TV to talk about Spanish football, you probably know how different I sound because Persian is not my native language. Um, English obviously is. I'm a, I'm a Canadianized Persian. I was born in Canada. Um, and it's, I just, my level of analysis isn't as good in Farsi, obviously. And I do it anyway. Why do I do it anyway? Because I have a rule is that if someone, if, if I have an op- opportunity to do something and it's uncomfortable, I have to do it. So, because otherwise I'm not going to grow. I'm not going to get better at it. I'm not going to be, I'm not going to grow as a journalist. If I just stuck to things I was comfortable with, you know what I'd be doing right now? I would be playing FIFA all day and I would be eating uh, uh, an, uh, an unhealthy amount of food. Um, you got to be uncomfortable. You got to embrace discomfort. Don't think of it as discomfort or fear. In fact, if it's, if it's fearful to you and you're scared, that means you should be doing it. You should be thankful for fear. You should be, th- you should be thanking every discomfortable, uncomfortable situation. You be, should be thanking any time you get scared because what that fear is biologically ultimately is that it's trying to keep you alive from something, right? And in this case, in this context, fear, it means you got to jump into it because you will never grow and you will never evolve. You will just stay the same every day. So so embrace discomfort. If it's uncomfortable and you don't want to do it, that means you should do it. Um, and, and with podcasting, the most uncomfortable thing, apart from getting on the microphone and actually doing it and getting good at it because you it's going to take you a while to get good at it. And I can say that from experience that I don't, I still don't feel like I'm, I'm, I'm where I need to be from a podcasting level, but I know that the journey is part of it and that each episode I'll approve. I'm, I, I've, I've mentioned this to a few people who I saw when I did the live podcast in Madrid. If you look at me in my first two, three episodes of managing Madrid, I was so nervous that I actually had a script because I remember reaching out to Gabe and I was like, hey, I noticed you guys haven't been consistent with the podcast, you know. Um, and at that time, I had been writing for Managing Madrid for a few months and um, my role isn't as big as it is today where I'm I'm actually working full time for Vox Media. But um, back then, I was, I was like kind of like, hey, Gabe, I noticed you haven't been that active with the podcast, you know, if, if you want. I can, I can do the editing. I can, I can publish it. I can make sure we do it consistently. He's like, hell yeah. So it was me, Gabe, Mike, and Josh. And honestly, at that point, in that moment, I was like, I don't know what I got myself into, but I just knew I, I wanted to do it and that it was important for my journalism career to do this because I saw the potential. Uh, I saw that Real Madrid are the biggest sports team in the world. I saw the market and I was like, even if we're not making money right now, this has a future where we are going to reach a huge market, a huge amount of people. And we eventually did. And, you know, if you track you know, our first podcast episode, I think it was like 1, 2000 or something. And then by the time we, it's reached its peak, where after the Liverpool Champions League final, we did like 11K, I was like, you know, you track that progress. You're like, man, this was, I'm so glad I sent, gave that email. And we're only growing, and I'm only saying this to you, not to not to boast or whatever, but because I know a lot of you who contact me, they want to start a Real Madrid podcast, thinking that the market isn't big enough, or like they're competing with me, and they're like, you know, kind of uh, half hesitant about it. And, and my answer to this is, Real Madrid market is endless. We haven't tapped, I'd say, even one percent of it, uh, and we're happy to tap in as many percentage points as we possibly can. But you know, we have friends who have you know penas around the world and specific languages there's you know the amount of the amount of uh different languages you can have a real Madrid podcast and specific to that country or whatever like the amount of niches you can fill covering real Madrid full-time are endless so i'm i'm saying this so you get encouraged to start your own if you want to and don't think of it as competition think of it as collaboration and reaching more people and helping them because ultimately you have to provide value and if you're providing value then you'll then you'll get successful um what I actually wanted to say when I went before I went on this thing, when I reached out to Gabe, I didn't have any podcasting editing experience. I had appeared on a few podcasts with Raptors Republic, which was the website I wrote for before managing Madrid. Uh, so I had a little bit of experience in that sense, but I didn't know how to edit. I didn't know how to record. And I was so nervous that I actually came up with a script. I wrote a script. I literally would write verbatim what I was going to say. And I remember specifically, I think around that time, it was like that around that time where 
uh, Hamez had gotten a speeding ticket or something, and Mark and As were just laying into him. So I had actually written a script, a paragraph, like, okay, when we talk about Hamez, this is what I'm going to say, and I would read it. I would literally lead, read it um, out loud from my Word document. And, you know, now there are times where we log on. I don't even know what we're going to talk about, but we just talk. And that just comes with um, consistency and getting comfortable and getting a bit better. Um, and I can't I can't emphasize this enough. It does not seem like something you'd need for journalism necessarily. But trust me, it is. Um, you need to be able to socialize constantly. Um, you need to be able to connect and talk with people and the art of going on a podcast and just talking for an hour without even any talking points that actually stems from being able to do that real life you know that's that's the that's congruency that you need to apply um to your podcast from actually having that in real life so i always try to just emphasize to people like if you're if you're if you feel like socially you have difficulty you need to work on that art. Obviously, that's difficult now during the quarantine and stuff. But when things get back to normal, get out and meet as many people as possible. Increase your social circles and constantly be because the difference that I have in a podcast, really like how good I can perform, it really ha- is highly dependent um, and maybe less so now because I've gotten a little bit better at it and I don't need that dependency. But um, you know, I would say some of the best podcasts I've done are, are probably live, the ones in New York, the, the the one or two in Madrid we did, and and part of that is because you just you're in that vibe, you're in you're you know, you're talking to people, you and you so you when you sit down to turn on the microphone, you're ready to go. You don't have to warm up your vocal cords, you don't have to you don't have to like you know worry about doing a half ass intro and not knowing what to say in the intro. It just it just kind of flows. So. Um, I've already kind of gone over this 10 minute mark of the, the amount I want to allocate to the end of each podcast about journalism. But the, the main takeaways are one, embrace discomfort, embrace fear, be thankful for it. And two, um, persistence. Because the reason why most podcasts come and go uh, are because you just lose momentum. Like you like, oh, I have one week, two week, okay, I'm feeling good. And then by the third week rolls around, like, oh, I don't want to do it this week or I can't find a guest. Just too bad. If you want, there there was a million nights where we could have just been like, I don't, we don't feel like doing it. Um, and we did it anyway. And now we're here, like, you know, during the quarantine, we had every excuse we could have possibly wanted to, to not record and just, and just have a hiatus, take a break. But we actually doubled down and we, we just we wanted to provide value as much as possible. So you need to be able to go week after week after week after week after week after week. And literally now we're up to two, three, four, sometimes five when you factor in Churros y Tacticas episodes a week, even during quarantine, even during the winter break, even during Christmas, during the summer transfer window, when sometimes when you just there's nothing to talk about, talking about the history. There is always an excuse not to record. Do it anyway. And I'm not kidding. Like, if you if you have no, if you have nothing to talk about, and you record a shitty podcast, that you by the end of it you feel like you don't want to publish it. That's okay. It didn't go to waste. You know why? Because you can decide not to publish it, but you should be uh, you should pat yourself on the back and just for the fact that you did it anyway. You record a shitty podcast because that will train your muscles, your brain muscles to to just do it, and. And uh, I will get into this in, in other episodes, but I, but you know, it's very similar to writing. Writing is a muscle. You don't have to publish something every day, but if you write every day, it it trains your muscle to just get in the habit to avoid writer's block. So, again, persistency and discomfort; those are two things that are essential uh, if you wanna if you wanna run a podcast or if you wanna get into journalism, probably any other job really. But those two things are are really important. So, yeah, I hope you found this helpful. And uh, if you want any specific uh, topic covered, you can always email me Keon at keonsobani dot com, and I'll try to cover it uh, at the end of uh, at the end of the the weekend episodes. All right, signing off. Thank you. Take care.